Okay, um, I found, finally um, think I found a, a good spot to um, shoot a quick update. Um, I have to be careful um, in the places I'm going to because um, a lot of what I'm seeing, you know, I can't film. Um, like the soldiers I just interacted with um, and, you know, the places I'm going. But also a lot of it, um, even if I could film, like, you know, the trenches I'm seeing and whatnot, um, I wouldn't want to. Um, not only for security reasons, but the stuff, you know, the work that we're doing, the humanitarian, um, humanitarian aid that we're delivering. Uh, as I mentioned a little bit ago, it's, it's just so hard to do the work and document it while you're doing it, you know? Um, and a lot of times, um, I don't want to, um, cheapen the moment by asking the person I, I just gave some food to, hey, could I, could I do that again? Could I, you know, get a shot of me handing you this, you know, this parcel? Anyway, um, oh, I wanted, I've been meaning to, um, mention on video, um, the, that, uh, when I made a video prior to coming on this trip, I mentioned that I planned to work with specific non-profit charitable organizations, namely, um, Reach Humanity and Hope Across Borders. And, um, Reach Humanity, um, founded by Lance and Marcy Foster, based out of Arizona, they do great work. They actually came last month in June, they were here, and so I missed them. And then my friends at Hope Across Borders, that's, that's Hope, and then the, the, the across is an X, uh, Hope Across Borders, um, founded by um, Wynn and Mindy Packer. Um, I think they're based out of Salt Lake. They're coming next month or September. So, um, but I've still been, you know, asking them, you know, where, where do you, do you know places, you know, where, where do you know if that needs help? And there are a few other places, refugee centers back in Poland when I get back there. I, I'm still in Ukraine right now for the second time this trip. But when I get back to Poland, there are a few places that I want to help out with displaced persons there. But anyway, um, but this trip, fortunately, I was able to connect with onebox.org, if I remember the URL correctly, that's one-box.org. And it's, um, I believe the full name of the organization is One Box for Ukraine. And the, the guy who founded it is a farmer out of Michigan. You've seen him in some of my recent my recent videos, um, Boyd Bilek. So he, he set up that, you know, all these nonprofits, they were set up ad hoc to respond to the needs of the Ukrainian people here for the war. But anyway, um, I want to thank uh, those who have already donated to One Box and encourage you, I'll, uh, I'll try to remember to put a link down in the description for this video, as well as um, links to those other organizations, because they really are worthy organizations. And I trust them. I know um, anyway, so earlier uh, I delivered four laptop computers to a church nearby where I am here. I just wanted to uh, mention something, uh, kind of off topic, but uh, something I was meaning to tell my kids uh, and my wife before I left for Ukraine, something I've been thinking about a lot, not just recently, but for, for a long time. Um, actually, a few years ago, I think it was around covid lockdown somewhere around there that I shared with my family a YouTube video I came across that uh, discussed research how uh, you know where to find lasting happiness in life and among the many things that it mentioned in that video and if I can find the video again I'll, I'll put a link in the description again but uh, among the many things it mentioned in that video is that ironically people who obsessed over Becoming happy tended to report being less happy, um, and recently, as I was preparing for this trip, I was thinking about how this isn't something that's just you know in our time, but I think it's a well, what's the word in English? It's a way of thinking that I think has been in our culture for a long time, because if you look at our Declaration of Independence, 
You know, I think Thomas Jefferson originally penned that among our inalienable rights uh, were life, liberty, and property. But then on revision, you know, those who were working with him, if I remember my history co correctly, they were saying, eh, we can't guarantee property, but how about the pursuit of happiness? Um, anyway, just I was thinking about that the other day before I came here to Ukraine, and I was thinking about the idea of pursuing happiness as if it were something that we needed to chase after, you know, it was elusive and we needed to hunt it down. Um, and of course, you know, there have been many books written on this subject and endless um, research studies done on this, you know, like, like one book that comes to mind is Man's Search for Happiness, like you have to search for it. And I had the realization for me myself that just like um, that one study showed that, that rather than perseverating, obsessing over trying to get happy, instead do things that lead you to be happy. Similarly, for me at least, I didn't have to pursue happiness, but I could choose to allow myself to be happy now. You know, in part that's related to mindfulness, but the idea that you can allow yourself to be at peace in the moment, and you can allow yourself to, to be happy despite your circumstances in life. Anyway, that's just a thought. Um, I'm going to go back to work. <laughs>